The illegal immigrant who became the center of the sanctuary city debate has just reemerged with a complaint, this time against the federal government. Jose Inez Garcia Zarate was acquitted last year of murdering Kate Steinle in San Francisco. The jury concluding that he shot her accidentally. It was a stunning verdict to some. Now, Zarate's attorneys are accusing the U.S. government of acting, quote, with vindictive prosecution, end quote, after getting hit with a second set of charges. They are arguing, quote, this, high, this case was highly publicized both locally and nationally almost immediately after the death of Ms. Steinle. Then presidential candidate Donald Trump began to use Mr. Garcia Zarate as the symbol of the dangers illegal immigrants uh, constitute and the need for a wall between the United States and Mexico, end quote. What do you make of this? Camilla? Yeah, um, I know the attorney who's bringing this forward, um, J. Tony Serra, mm -hmm. I mean, from being a prosecutor in San Francisco, having cases there against him. Um, he's a you know, very principled guy. He's really a true believer beyond. So this is exactly, this is his jam. He likes to do <laughs> cases like this. He's like, yes. So I'm not surprised that he's bringing it. This is the type of stuff that he likes to take on that's novel. He's using like vindictive prosecution and trying to bring in President Trump. It's been a lot of that lately. Mm -hmm. where they try and bring in the president and say, oh, the president has, you know, made that polluted this atmosphere and the environment, made it unfair to get a fair trial because of the comments that he has made or his activity on Twitter, etc. So they use the power of uh, the, the president's rhetorical, you know, persuasion as an argument to say that it has deprived somebody of, you know, a fair trial or in this case saying there's vindictive prosecution going forward. I, I don't think that it will prevail, but thank you for the question. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Welcome, Your Honor. Uh -huh. uh, Jesse, what do you make of it? I mean, Kimberly's probably right. He's an excellent <laughs> attorney, and he got this guy off, uh, which I thought it was a slam dunk case. The prosecution did a terrible job. They overcharged. They should have gone with the manslaughter instead of the, the uh, murder one. But it's a showboat type of deal. I mean, this is a Hail Mary. It's not going to work. Remember when they held the press conference after the acquittal and they started blaming President Trump and started to nationalize the story? This is just a local story. The guy should have been locked up. And now, call it vindictive or not, he broke federal law. You cannot be in the possession of a firearm if you're an illegal immigrant. That's a 10-year mandatory. That's what they're trying to hit him with. And good. I, I, hope they, I hope he's punished. He deserves to be punished. The guy was, I think it was a, a meth head. He'd been in across the border five to six times, convicted of multiple felonies. And whether it was an accidental shooting or it was a, a purposeful shooting, he cost Kate Steinle her life. And he should pay the price for it. And it's just sad to see the whole thing trivialized in the court like that. So, Dana, the point that I thought would interest you is that the lawyers are, in fact, citing President Trump's comments mm -hmm. during the campaign and his tweets as the basis for saying that the president is the one who nationalized this case and made Zarate into a, a subject of derision. Oh, well, I would also say, you know, he wasn't the first to politicize and to nationalize it. I mean, there was a lot of publicity about this case and we know where that all started, and, and, and for good reason, because it was outrageous that she lost her life and that the family is going to have to spend their life missing her and being so heartbroken about it. So, um, you know, he was acquitted the first time. In some ways, I feel like they should just be thankful yeah. for that. Um, and I guess we'll see what happens in, in this next case. The, uh, they've tried to use President Trump's tweets before, like in the, tr in the travel ban case, mm -hmm. and it wasn't successful because they said it wasn't material to the thing. So I don't know what will happen in this case. I doubt it will be something you could specifically pin on President Trump because everyone was talking about it and it didn't start with Trump. So what do you predict, Greg? Uh, I don't, I'm not in the business of predicting, oh, okay. I'm only in <laughs> pontificating. And I will say, if this was a political prop or a ploy, so what? Uh, that's been the liberal strategy with every crisis, never let a scandal, a crisis go to waste. They always know when to find a poster boy and run with it. And this guy was, the, was a symbol of what uh, Donald Trump was talking about, which is that a system that does not follow the law allows for the pain and suffering of lawful citizens. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, th this, it, it, it illustrated it to such a degree that I think it actually, it helped elect him. I really think this helped elect him. But the bigger point is, 
There are four things that have happened in the last couple of years that kind of all have something in common. There's this case, there's Parkland, there's a, there was a killing in Boston where uh, a, a madman had uh, stabbed a woman to death in a library. That was a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. There was a teenager that just uh, murdered his friend at a slumber party uh, uh, after uh, preaching to ISIS. All of these things have in common are that they, pe people knew about them beforehand. They were known as dangerous or problems by law enforcement, mm. meaning all four of these, these horrible things, including this guy, could have been prevented. If people had followed the law, if they had followed the law, this guy wouldn't have been in San Francisco, even if it was an accident and he was shooting at the ground and the bullet ricocheted. Yeah, that, he didn't mean to kill her, but he never would have been there if they followed the law. Uh, Donald Trump was elected because he was talking about a return to law. That's why this was such a symbol and why mm -hmm. it worked. You know, don't you think it was about immigration? And, and I mean, what, what President Trump did, I think, quite effectively was make him into the symbol of the idea that, boy, there are a lot of illegal immigrants who are criminals. Well, yeah, he was Fair a, enough, that's that's he an illegal immigrant who's a criminal. Yeah. Well, yeah, but that's, but I think he was trying to say writ that, large. That's, I don't think he was saying writ no. large. I think he was saying bad guys go, good guys stay. Yeah. That's the way I read it anyway. Bad hombres, remember? Yeah. Oh, Get I do. Remember. How can I forget? But I, I'm not a mind reader, Juan. I leave no. that to the liberals. Okay. <laughs>